behind Thailand's greatest jewel hides a dark secret. This is the behind the scenes that the elephant tourism industry doesn't want you to see. It's the shocking reality that majority of elephants in Southeast Asia face. Perhaps even more shocking is that it's you and I, the traveler, who is unknowingly supporting the torture and abuse of these beautiful creatures. Before an elephant can be ridden, perform in the show, or behave in any manner that's unnatural, it must first have its spirits broken. This process is called the pajan, or also known as the crush. Directly translated, the pajan means to split the elephant's body from its spirits, essentially to make the elephant soulless. In order to achieve this, baby elephants are taken away from their mothers and kept in isolation for days to weeks at a time. They are tied down, starved and beaten until their will to live is crushed. It's at this point that the elephant is ready for the tourism industry. Fortunately, this cruel practice doesn't represent all elephant businesses. There's a few bold individuals who are defying the norms and leading the forefront in improving the welfare of these creatures. This is our story of joining one of the world leading elephant rights groups in rescuing two elephants from a lifetime of injustice. My name is Christian LeBlanc and for the past year I've been making travel videos on YouTube full time. This passion started with a university exchange that brought me to Bangkok, Thailand. I began creating simple videos using just a GoPro to share my travels with friends and family, but this hobby of mine slowly introduced me into the world of filmmaking. On January 2016, I traveled to Koh Samui, Thailand, where I saw a scene that would rock me to my core. As I was exploring the island by scooter, I came across an elephant trekking park on the side of the road. I decided to pull over and check out what was deemed one of the top experiences in Thailand. The fun elephant experience that was shown on Facebook and Instagram was completely different from the reality. What I saw that day was a holding cell for mentally ill elephants. Most of them chained so tightly that they stood in their own feces. With only about 5 feet of chain, their movement was completely restricted, but many of the captive elephants made the exact same rocking motion, with their trunks being spun in a continuous circle. You didn't have to be an animal expert to read that the cries from the elephants were being made out of frustration and anger. Elephants are beloved around the world, but for some reason there was very little being covered on this topic. Why was nobody talking about the physical and mental abuse inflicted onto these innocent animals? With the incredible support of my YouTube audience, enough money was raised for my friend Blake and I to give these animals the voice they need. After traveling halfway across the world, we arrived at Elephant Nature Park in Chiang Mai, Thailand. Elephant Nature Park is one of the leading forces in elephant rights activism and since 1996, they've rescued over 200 abused elephants. To better understand the business, it's essential to understand the leadership. The founder and the face of Elephant Nature Park is Sang Dwen Chai Ler, but she mostly goes by the name of Lek. When Lek was just 16 years old, she saw an elephant logging camp where the elephants were being used for intensive labor to pull logs from one place to another. Seeing the elephants in such brutal working conditions broke Lek's heart and it was at this point that she realized that she was going to dedicate her life to improving the welfare of these animals. When she was just a young server, Lek was setting aside some money so that she could actually buy her first elephant. When she finally had enough, she rescued one from the circus. This was just the start for her. When I first found the elephant, I saw them, you know, like a zombie, they stand still. Some of them walk circle when they arrive. They not even they not even want to move. I rescued one baby elephant from the from the circus. She shook her legs for three and a half years. After uh, we take the chain out of her leg, she stayed with us for five months. She still put the leg like that and jump like a kangaroo. She tried to kill five previous mahout uh, from from her uh, circus. And when she arrived here. Today, you know, she she very gender and very independent and very stubborn. 
Lek was extremely kind and she showed us around the park, introducing us to the different herds and telling us of the different stories of each of the elephants. Just like people, there were certain elephants that Lek had a stronger bond with than others. After spending just a couple days at the sanctuary, we were extended the offer of a lifetime. Lek and the Elephant Nature Park team invited us to join them on a rescue mission to save two elephants from the Sarin province of Thailand. Eight hundred and sixty kilometers and about fourteen hours of driving through the night, we had arrived in Sarin at sunrise. As we drove through Sarin, it became apparent that this was a city that was profiting on the abuse of elephants. This is the sad reality most Southeast Asian elephants face. Many of the animals suffer. Now the elephant show, they are forced to do something for unnatural trick. This program should be stopped right away. They shouldn't have. They shouldn't be exist. Lek explained that if you provide for natural behavior, you do see healing. A lot of the elephants will show up at the sanctuary without any families. But very quickly, they become pairs, they become trios, and they join other herds. Eventually, you see a lot of the stereotypical behaviors work their way out. The rocking back and forth comes to a stop, and the formerly aggressive elephants become much more gentle and loving. Their ability to socialize with other elephants is critical. It's a huge problem, you know, and I get in with a lot of stress, you know, with when, especially when I have to work to fight against all the animal cruelty in the country that is have no law for the animal law, and especially for the elephant business. It's only big business men who have a lot of money to talk, you know, and, and when we start to talk about abuse behind that, it's not a good fun. When we arrived, we saw the two elephants that we had driven across the country to rescue, Boon Mi and Bua Ban. The two elephants were being watched by a couple of mahouts. Their relationship was one of submission. The men carried sticks to control the elephants by hitting them in their sensitive places, like behind the ear. At this point, the elephants were still in the possession of the trekking business, and there was a feeling of uncertainty as to how the deal was going to go down. The eldest elephant was the one that caught Elephant Nature Park's attention. They had heard news of her collapsing of exhaustion from giving tourists rides and a crane had to be brought in to lift her back up so she could continue to work. It was almost time, but first, the Elephant Nature Park team had to set up the rescue vehicles. I asked Lek if she thought there would ever be an end to the elephant trekking industry. What she left me with was a very powerful statement. What the traveler asks for is what the traveler gets. It's a very heavy reminder that we need to travel responsibly, with a conscience for others. Two large trucks were set up with padding and bracing so that the elephants were less likely to fall during transportation. The elephants would stand the entire trip, so it's very important they had support. Large logs were used to give them something to bear the weight. A green canopy was also tied on top to prevent the hot sun from beating down on their backs for what would almost be a 25 hour ride home. The elephants and their unfriendly mahouts walked them over with chains around their necks. The owners of the elephants and Elephant Nature Park met face to face. The Elephant Nature Park team brought out two large bags stuffed to the top with 1,000 baht bills. The money exchanged hands and the next few minutes went by very slowly. <laughs> Finally, the owners gave a sign. They confirmed that the money handed over was good and I immediately felt relieved. 
The elephant owners and Elephant Nature Park exchanged handshakes and a few other gestures of good faith. By no means can I take any credit for the work that Elephant Nature Park has done here, but it was amazing to share that victory with them. The best way that is uh, for the people to help the elephant, first thing, spread the word, educate to the other who didn't know. Especially if, if they really love elephant and care about elephant, they should guide to the other to traveling to see the elephant with respect. The next five hours, Blake and I rode on top of the truck, hanging out with the eldest elephant, Wun Mi. When night hit, Blake and I went inside the truck to sleep, but Elephant Nature Park's Mahout stayed with the elephants through the night. This was their first chance to build a bond with the elephants and to let them know that they were loved. Once again, we drove through the night and into the day. As we approached Chiang Mai, the sun became increasingly hot and difficult on the elephants. Luckily, only about a few minutes later, we were hit with a massive rainfall, giving the elephants a much needed break from the heat. I never drop my dream. I, when I want to do something, I focus on that. It's not easy, you know. To work with elephant is not a fairy tale. It's a lot of problem. We can't expect the next generation to be, you know, kind or peaceful. If we want anything to be changed, we have to change from our hand, not wait for the next generation. Close to 25 hours later, the elephants arrived at their new home. With arms wide open, Elephant Nature Park staff and the media watched as the two elephants slowly backed off the truck. They were now going to live very different lives than they had ever before. Today, Boon Mi and Bua Ban live happily at Elephant Nature Park, and just a few days after their arrival, the inseparable duo became a trio when one of the lonesome elephants joined their herd. Today, the three can be found playing in the mud, swimming in the river, and eating copious amounts of fresh fruit. The message that I read the clearest from Lek is that these are not animals that can be domesticated. Our attempt to train and control them is causing them physical and mental abuse. But luckily, you have the power to stop this abuse. With the majority of elephants today being used in the tourism industry, the treatment they receive is directly related to the businesses we support. When we ride an elephant, we reinforce the abusive practices of elephant crushing. When we take our money to places like Elephant Nature Park, we signal to the other businesses that this is what the tourist wants. Ultimately, it's the traveler's dollar that decides which businesses stay and which of them go. There are three easy steps that you can take to creating a better future for these elephants. Now the first step is that we need to avoid the businesses that promote unnatural interaction with the elephants. These are the businesses that have their elephants in chains, that use them for trekking and for shows, and essentially treat them as if they were a ride. We need to avoid these businesses. But simply avoiding these businesses is not enough. We actually need to take it a step further and we need to find the businesses that support the elephants, that treat them well and allow them to socialize with friends and family. We need to actually financially back them. And in doing so, other businesses will follow. Essentially, it's the traveler's dollar that defines the future of the elephant tourism industry. The third and final step is that we need to tell our friends and our family. We need to let the next set of travelers know that that seemingly innocent photo sitting on the back of an elephant is actually causing a whole lot of destruction. There's a lot greater implications than most people realize, and that's on us. We need to share that message. The power of this message lies in your hands, and without you, we cannot share it. Take this video and share it on your Facebook, put it on your Twitter, and even message it to your friend of yours who's coming to Thailand. When done right, elephant tourism can be the most rewarding experience in all of Southeast Asia, but it is up to us to make sure that the future of elephant tourism is one that we're proud of. We have just gotten to the end of Black Tusk and I have so many thank yous to spread around because this was not made possible by one person, but by many. A huge thank you to Lekwood Elephant Nature Park. You are the reason this documentary is half of what it is. A massive thank you to Leon Fogarty for providing her lifetime research in the industry. We wouldn't know what we knew about the elephants without her, so thank you so much. A massive thank you to my YouTube audience for financially backing this project. I also wanted to thank PETA for providing us with the elephant Fajan footage, which is the not so enjoyable footage to watch, but we couldn't have gotten it without them, so thank you. And lastly, a massive thank you to Blake Davey for being the incredible videographer and filmmaker that joined me on this trip. He is one of the most talented people I know, and I couldn't have done it without him. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to share this video, because without you, we don't have a voice.